They say when you meet the love of your life, time stops. And that's true. Ah, the meat cute. One of the most common tropes in film, and interestingly enough, one of the most difficult to write. It's used to describe when two people, destined to fall in love with each other, meet in an often cute or interesting manner. Somebody runs into somebody else. Oh, dude, I'm so sorry. And then something falls, and the two people begin to talk. Oh, dude, I'm sorry, I got my Q-tip in your meat, bro. Oh man, I got my, I got my meat in your Q-tip. And their eyes meet, and they realize that they are attracted to one another. <laughs> like a meat cute. <laughs> but it's not always as cute as it is in 21 Jump Street. Ladies, keep driving. In fact, the meat cute has evolved over the years. So in this episode, we're going to analyze the different types of meat cutes and the elements involved in writing a good one. You are a criminal. The first type of meat cute is where one character likes the other, but the feelings aren't mutual. You want to dance with me? No. This particular meet cute is common because it sets up a clear roadmap for the film. One character wants the other, but is blocked by the other character's inability or denial to reciprocate that love. This meet cute establishes a clear goal and obstacle that will fuel the conflict for the majority of the film. Other examples of this meet cute include Singing in the Rain and The American President. Then your boss is the chief executive of Fantasyland. Let's take him out back and beat the shit out of him. The second type of meet cute is one in which both characters hate each other. Basically, I'm a happy person. So am I. And I don't see that there's anything wrong with that. Of course not, you're too busy being happy. They haven't yet realized that they're truly meant for one another. This can also be one in which both characters don't necessarily hate each other, but are indifferent. You say there's nothing here. Well, let's make something clear. I think I'll be the one to make that call. This particular meet cute is common in, but not limited to, adventure movies such as Indiana Jones oh, I hope you choke. or The Princess Bride. What can I do for you? You can die slowly, cut into a thousand pieces. And it's only through the course of the journey that they eventually realize how they're meant for each other. The third type of meet cute is one in which both parties like each other, but some external force prevents them from being together. Madam, your mother calls. It doesn't have to be as drastic as warring families like in Romeo and Juliet. It could be something much simpler, such as already being tied down in a relationship in 2001's Serendipity. Who were they for? My boyfriend. Her boyfriend. His. But the meat cute itself doesn't necessarily have to be cute. In Titanic, Jack first meets Rose while she's attempting suicide. But even this dire situation is riddled with light, comedic undertones. Ice fishing is, you know where you. I know what ice fishing is. But what makes a great meat cute, and what makes its purpose more than just to have the main characters meet? I left her by the telescopes. First, meat cutes should be unique. The trope has become so cliche that you need to make sure it's different. Take, for example, the meet cute from The Notebook. Ryan Gosling's character climbs a Ferris wheel while the girl of his dreams is on a date with another man. Second, the meet cute should provide the foundation for the conflict in the movie. And you can find this out by asking yourself, what is getting in the way of your characters falling madly in love with each other? Is it an external force? One's reluctance to fall in love with the other? Or a mutual distaste for each other? Third, does your meet cute require dramatic irony to create intrigue? Dramatic irony is when we, the audience, know something about the characters, but the characters don't know it about themselves or each other. In You've Got Mail, we, the audience, know that the rival bookstore owners, played by Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan, have been falling in love through their email correspondence, but they don't know they've been messaging each other. It's only until later on in the film that Tom Hanks' character realizes who she is and has to win her over, leaving Ryan's character oblivious to the irony around her. They're opening up a Fox Books around the corner. Fox Books, my daddy! L likes to buy a discount. Dramatic irony can also come into play when both characters like each other. When Leonardo DiCaprio meets Claire Danes in Romeo and Juliet, neither of them know they belong to warring houses, but we, the audience, do. His name is Romeo. This creates what I like to call the promise of conflict. It's what the story is going to be about. We know down the line that shit is going to hit the fan and come in the way of our hero's true love. 4. Make your characters' worlds collide. This usually involves making the characters themselves, or the obstacles preventing them from being together, as different from one another as possible. The more divergent they are, the more possibilities of them not getting together. And these differences can be social, economic, or internal. 
they create conflict, and as I always say, conflict equals drama. In Made in Manhattan, for example, Jennifer Lopez is a single mom struggling to make ends meet who falls in love with a senator from a wealthy political dynasty. They come from two completely different socio-economic spheres. The two different worlds technique can also be found in Titanic and West Side Story. Other times this conflict can come internally from the characters. In Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, Indiana is the arrogant man to Willie Scott's fragile woman in peril. And I know that's a bit problematic, but that whole discussion is worthy of another video. So if you're writing a meet cute, first identify what type you're writing. Do they hate each other, love each other, or is it somewhere in between? From there, create ways to make it memorable or unique, and this could be derived by how different the characters are from each other or the obstacles preventing them from being with each other. Then comes the hardest part of all, you actually have to write it. Until next time, keep putting that pen to paper.